So now we're going to go ahead and discuss anisotropy and angle. And they're really two parts of the same sort of equation. The idea with anisotropy is that we are dealing with sort of a brushed metal type surface or a fabric texture where you have the light being pulled along a line that is not necessarily what you would normally find. A scratch is a form of anisotropy. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a vinyl record in your life, but vinyl records are a form of anisotropy. And of course, when you see concentric type circular steel that's been polished in those circular ways where everything kind of shines in a, in a circle, that's a form of anisotropy. It's a useful trick that is performed by Maxwell on your behalf. And it's something that we'll get into great detail as we move on. But for right now, the idea of anisotropy is that it controls the flow of light across the surface in a linear way, meaning brushed metal or, or something along those lines. It's kind of hard to describe. It's easier to tell what it is when you see it. So here we go. Anisotropy. This is our base material. Let me just go ahead and there we go. And you can see here it's more or less a standard material. I have an ND and a K value here. I have force Fresnel on, and I have a roughness of 30. And that's just because anisotropy, when you activate anisotropy, it really works best with a little bit of roughness. You don't have to have it too much roughness, and you won't be able to see it anyway, which we'll get into here before too long. But that's the basic idea. So I just went ahead and created uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100% anisotropy, everything else remained exactly the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, we have zero. And you can see this looks just like a material that we would expect at a 30% roughness. We get over here to anisotropy 10, and we don't see much difference. It's a little bit softer. There's a slight blurring kind of effect that happens, and this can be useful sometimes. Over at 20, we're getting a more distinct blurring type of effect where not only is it rough, but it's also kind of pulling the reflections in sort of a linear way. Up in 30, we're really starting to get a noticeable difference. In 40, now we can really begin to see what looks to be something kind of like a sanded surface. And now when we get to 50 and above, we can really begin to see the anisotropy coming into play. We're dealing with a surface that is rough, but different in a way from the regular roughness. It's a different type of roughness. It's, it's sort of a linear roughness. And it's pulling the light in this very linear fashion all the way down to where we get to 100%. You can see it's, it's pulling the light in this very linear fashion, your highlight and your shadows. And it doesn't at all look the way that it does when it first starts, even though it's completely the same material in every other way. So the next thing that we have to be concerned about is how does roughness affect our anisotropy? So here we go. I've basically taken a bunch of materials and I've had them with different roughnesses with anisotropy on at 100% and off. So just various pairs here to show you how roughness plays out here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. It's AA part two. So here we go. No roughness at all. It's, it's roughness zero. And this is with anisotropy on. So you can see here that it's kind of a strange look. It's both rough and sort of pulling those reflections in a linear fashion, but it's not really exactly what you would expect for this type of surface either. It's a little bit too smooth. So if we go up to roughness 10, now we're starting to get something that's closer to what we would expect. You can see here the roughness is only slightly blurry, but when we get the anisotropy going, again, we have that sort of linear pull of everything we get up to roughness 20 and really get into the range at which I think anisotropy looks best. I think right around 20, 25, somewhere in the neck of the woods of roughness is really where anisotropy is going to look the best. But what you will want to notice is the higher that we go in roughness here, and I'll get up to say 40 here, so we've already seen the 30s. The higher we go in roughness, the less you're going to see a difference between the two. So we get up to a roughness of 50, and it's really losing that anisotropy effect. It's, it's starting to become more and more just a standard rough surface. When you get above 50, you just don't see the anisotropy at all. It just becomes a rough surface. So 
That is the anisotropy in reference to how it works with the roughness of the base material. Now we need to see what happens with the angles. And you can see that here with these sample materials that I've rendered out very nicely. All I did here was I just changed the angles. Now, important thing to know about angles, angles have a range of 360 degrees because a circle is 360 degrees. So unlike anisotropy, which has a range of 0 to 100, angles have a range of 0 to 360. So we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that. These are our materials, and I'm just going to render right here to AA part 3. And basically, I mean, this isn't really a big deal. It's not something that's going to kind of puzzle you or anything. But the idea here is that the angle changes the direction in which the anisotropy flows. So we go from one side of the object to the other side of the object just by virtue of going completely onto the other side of the semicircle here. You don't need to go in a full circle because 180 degrees will describe a full half circle, which is basically all you need for something like this. You don't need to go full 360. That's important to note. I don't use anisotropy much just as an out-of-the-box type of effect. It needs some modification to really be a winner for you. Probably about the only time that you would use anisotropy out-of-the-box, so to speak, would be on fabric, which we'll see in the very next lesson.